equal vectors, parallel vectors, vector addition, and resultant vectors. This is lesson 8.6b. We have an 8.6a that is really important you watch it. This is the last video for chapter 8, and you could become lost or confused. It's in the description in the geometry playlist. So we talked about this in the last video. A vector is a quantity that has both length and direction. The speed and direction an object moves can be represented by a vector. Two vectors are equal vectors if they have the same magnitude and the same direction. So here's an example. We've got vector u is equal to vector v, and you can see them here. The arrowheads are on the same side. They have the same direction. Equal vectors don't have to have the same initial and terminal points. So you can see they have different initial and terminal points, but they are equal. And be careful. This vector AB is not equal to vector BA because the vectors wouldn't have the same direction. This one is starting with A and going to B. Vector BA would start with B and go to A, okay? So be careful. Here we have vector U and vector V. And in component form, vector U is a 4, 2, and vector V is a 4, 2. We can find each magnitude using the distance formula. Vec the magnitude of vector U, we start with point 0.1 sub 1 right here. It's a 1, 3. And the second point, the tip, would be 5, 5. We put it into the distance formula, and we find that it's the square root of 20 which can be simplified to 2 square root of 5. That's the magnitude, okay, of vector u. And the magnitude of vector v, we put in the points 3, 1, and 7, 3 into the distance formula, and it's also square root of 20, which simplifies to 2 square root of 5. And the magnitude of vector u is equal to the ve magnitude of vector v. They're both 2 square root of 5. Vector u and vector v are equal vectors. They have the same magnitude, 2 square root of 5, and they have the same direction. See? So they're equal. And two vectors are parallel vectors if they have the same direction or if they have opposite directions. They may have different magnitudes. So here we have vector x and vector w. In component form, vector x is a negative 2, 1. That's the vertical component over the horizontal component would be a negative half. And the component form of vector w with the vertical over the horizontal would be a negative 2 over a 4, which is also a negative half. And vector x is parallel to vector w. And the distance formula shows us they have different magnitudes. The magnitude of vector x is square root of 5. And the magnitude of vector w is 2 square root of 5. So they're parallel, and they're going in opposite directions, and they have different magnitudes. So this is really important. Equal vectors are always parallel vectors. They have the same magnitude and direction. Parallel vectors are not always equal vectors, so it's not the same the other way around. They may have different magnitudes and opposite vectors are parallel but not equal. They don't have the same direction. And opposite vectors have the same length or magnitude but go in opposite directions. And we talked about this in the last video. Zero vectors have their initial and terminal points at the origin. They have zero magnitude. The resultant vector is the vector that rep represents the sum of two given vectors. And to add two vectors geometrically, we can use the head-to-tail method, and sometimes called tip-to-tail, or the parallelogram method. A resultant is an adjective that means issuing or following as a consequence or result. A resultant vector follows from two vectors as their sum. So here's vector addition. In the method, the head to tail, we place the initial point tail for vector v, this blue one, on the terminal point head of this first vector u, this green one. See how the tail is on the head? The resultant is the vector that joins the initial point of the first one to the terminal point of the second one. 
So vector u plus vector v would be this pink line right here, see? Adding two vectors is like combining two forces, all right? In the parallelogram method, you know the definition of a parallelogram, this side has to be parallel to this side and this side has to be parallel to this side. We use the same initial point for both given vectors. We create a parallelogram by adding a copy of each vector at the terminal point head of the other vector. So the copy of this one starts here and the copy of this one starts here. We make these parallel, we make these parallel and the resultant vector is the diagonal of the parallel formed. Okay? We can add vectors numerically by adding their components. The sum of two vectors is also a vector. It's a resultant vector. We just learned about that, didn't we? Right here. If vector u is equal to x sub 1, y sub 1, and vector v is equal to x sub 2, y sub 2, then vector u plus vector v is equal to the x values added together and the y values added together. So here we have a nice problem. A canoe leaves shore at a bearing of north 55 degrees east and paddles at a constant speed of three miles per hour. If you have trouble with directions, I taught my kids north is up, south is down, and we go across. It spells the word we. That's like the West Coast, California, the East Coast, New York on a map, right? There's a one mile per hour current moving due east. So what are the canoe's actual speed and direction? Around the speed to the nearest tenth and the direction to the nearest degree. So the first thing we're going to do is draw vectors for the canoe and the current. The second thing we're going to do is write the vector for the canoe in component form. And the canoe's vector has a magnitude of three miles per hour. We saw that here and makes an angle of 35 degrees with the x-axis. How did I get that? Well, it says it's north 55 degrees east, right? And if that's 55 degrees and this is a 90 degree angle, then that's 35 degrees because it's a complement, right? 90 minus 55 is 35. So we have the cosine of 35 degrees is equal to x over 3. So x is equal to 3 cosine of 35 degrees, which is approximately 2.5 on our calculators. And sine 35 degrees is equal to y over 3. So y is equal to 3 sine 35 degrees, which is approximately 1.7. If you're really confused about this, you missed the beginning of chapter 8, because we spent all those videos throughout this entire chapter until this lesson learning about these trig functions. So the canoe's vector is 2.5, 1.7. So now we need to do the current, all right? So the third thing we're going to do is we're going to write the vector for the current in component form. And since the current moves one mile per hour, we saw that here, right? It's a one mile an hour current. And it moves in the direction of the x-axis. It has a horizontal component of one and a vertical component of zero. It's got a horizontal component of 1 and a vertical component of 0, okay? So the vector of the current is 1, 0. We find and draw the resultant vector, vector AB. We add the components of the canoe's vector, this 2.51.7, to the 1, 0, and the green ones added together is 3.5, the orange ones, the y values added together, is 1.7, the vertical ones. So the resultant vector in component form is 3.5, 1.7. We have 3.5, 1.7. Now, the fifth thing we do is find the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector. And the magnitude of the resultant vector is the canoe's actual speed with the current, taking the current into consideration, okay? So, we know that x sub 1, y sub 1 is a 0, 0 because the initial point is the origin. So using the distance formula, we know that that's going to be those values. We've got 3.5, 1.7. We put it into the distance formula and doing our math, we find out that we get this nice long decimal for the square of 15.14, which rounds to 3.9 miles per hour, approximately 3.9. So. The angle measure formed by the resultant vector gives the canoe's actual direction. 
The tangent of A would be the opposite over the adjacent. That would be 1.7 over 3.5. 1.7 over 3.5, okay, for the tangent of A, the opposite over the adjacent. So A is equal to the inverse tangent of 1.7 over 3.5. We put that into our calculator. Don't forget to hit the shift button for the inverse. We get this nice decimal number, which is approximately 26 degrees. And you, he originally left shore at a bearing of north 55 degrees east, didn't he? It says north 55 degrees east was when he left the shore, okay? But his actual bearing was north 64 degrees east. How did I get that? Again, compliments. If that's 26 degrees, then 90 minus 26 is 64. So his actual bearing was north 64 degrees east. So don't forget you're dealing with complements when you're going to write the bearing, okay? Our next lesson is reflections and isometry, 9.1a. Then we're going to get into drawing reflections in the coordinate plane for 9.1b. Then we're going to be getting into more transformations with translations and drawing them. We're going to get into dilations, rotations, all in Chapter 9, okay? So we're finished with Chapter 8, and I want you to keep in mind that when you see these vectors, it's not a ray, okay? I don't want you to think of it as a ray. I want you to think of it as a force, like an acceleration, all right? So it's very different from a ray. It's like a wind blowing in a certain direction at a certain speed or a rocket going in a certain direction at a certain speed, that's a vector, okay? Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Hit that like button for me if you can. It helps me on YouTube. It makes my videos more popular, and that helps me out. I'll see you next time. Bye.